All right, so we'll go over uh, this is our Ford conference call. Um, we were going to have one last week. Um, the Gulf Coast took a direct hit from, as you know, Hurricane Ian. Unfortunately, we were in uh, the direct path of it, so uh, pretty crazy storm. I've been through a few of them, and uh, this was one of the worst. Uh, so hopefully uh, everyone that you know was okay through it, and um, it, was a, it was a pretty brutal storm. So we're going to get back to some normalcy, though. Um, the power grids are pretty much uh, back up. There's only some spots that's going to be down for a couple more weeks, maybe two or three weeks. But uh, we're back up and running. Uh, we're going to get back to some normalcy. I'll be in the room tomorrow at um, at uh, 8.15, and I'll be in there uh, till, uh, Friday at 8.15 also. I want to go over tonight, uh, recap. Uh, the storm sort of took us down for about a week. So uh, I want to recap what we're looking for on your own charts, and then I want to go into the what I'm working on on an update for you guys. Um, I did add the momentum indicator to the strategy. I want to touch base on that. I'm going to go full... Uh, full on on trying to get that uh, uh, ready for you guys and get that update out to you guys, all your members. So let's first of all, let's go over uh, let's go over the setups and get a roll on this uh, here uh, here this afternoon or this evening. So uh, if you haven't played video one through three, um, I highly uh, suggest that you play that over uh, because it sort of puts everything into that they these two setups, the momentum setup and also the, I call it FZR, full zone retracement setup, work together. Um, I'll go over, first of all, time frames. I'm going to get this a lot from a, a lot of members trade different markets. They, they, they don't trade the S&P. Um, we got traders that trade stocks, uh, even um, indexes, um, spiders, the diamonds. I mean, they trade pretty much anything that's tradable. They're, they're even trading uh, crypto off of these setups. So we got crypto traders. So um, you got a lot of different diverse traders trading different markets, but it's all the same setup. So whether you are trading uh, the Dow or the NASDAQ or you're trading the S&P or you're trading Bitcoin or you're trading the 30-year bond, 10-year, 5-year, for soybeans, corn, it doesn't matter. The, the same setup applies to all of them. So you're going to see some consistency in the setup. So what we're going to uh, what we want to do is we want to focus on really two setups uh, because we have this zone pretty much down where these markets should turn, and these zones are categorized by an ATR. So this is my ATR zone. It's categorized by a red. Uh, these dots are red or green. If it's in an uptrend, the ATR you are green. If you are red, you're in a, you are green. You're in an uptrend. Red, you're in a downtrend. And we went over that in the last three videos. Really good. So just uh, so if you need to recap that. So um, if you do need to recap those three videos, I go in great detail. So I'm not going to go in great, great detail. I'm going to recap this and get a little further on this. I don't want to make this too long. And then we'll, uh, we'll get moving. So the, the, first, the first two things we want to try to do is we want to try to find um, either one, we want to try a full retracement, we going to look for full retracement in any one of these markets that you trade. Or two, we want uh, the market to tell us that, hey, we're moving fast. We're moving violently to the downside or upside. And we want to look for momentum. So you either want to look for a momentum setup, which is called, I call that a MOMO. Or we want to look for a retracement setup, which I call an FCR, a full zone retracement. So a zone is categorized by getting inside of these red ATR dots or green ATR dots, FCR. All right, so that, those are your two setups. So a full zone retracement is categorized as getting inside or at the full zone, meaning we're getting up into these red dots. We're getting at it or inside of it, but we're not closing outside of it per se. We want we, if those, we want those ATR dots stop printing. That trend, according to this algorithm, is over. So we want to strictly then try to trade with trend retracements. So both these setups are based upon selling retracements with overall trend direction. One setup, the FZR, is more of a full retracement where we're letting the market fully retrace up into the zone and then getting a reversal 
so we can call tops and try to call bottoms on retracements with trend. A momentum setup say, says, hey, we're not trying to get the top, uh, uh, not trying to sell a full retracement, try the zone. It can be outside the zone, anywhere below the zone. It can be way below the zone. It doesn't matter where it's at. We're looking for momentum to carry us lower and sell lower lows and try to sell low and buy lower. If we're looking for buys, it doesn't have to be inside the green zone. It can be a way above it, and we're looking for pullbacks, uh, shallow retracements, or continuations. So these two work really good together because you have a full retracement, which the market loves to do inside the zone. I'm sure members, a lot of the members, I get a lot of emails from members that trade all these different markets, and they really like the full retracement because they're very low risk trades because you have defined stops on all of them. Same way with momentum. The momentum doesn't have to be a high risk, prob uh, uh, high, prob high risk trade because you have a stop on that also, and I'll go over that tonight. So you have defined stops on, on both of these. If it's not going to work out, then, you know, you don't want to keep adjusting your stop. You just want to let it stop out and look for the next setup. Because if, that, if this swing high doesn't hold, typically it's going to set a higher high. If the momentum dissipates and you're not getting out of your first target relatively quickly, and I'll go over that, then, you know, the momentum setup is probably not going to, it's going to, it's going to go to your stop. So, these two should hold. They're very, very accurate uh, individually. They're very accurate together. When they do not work out, you just got to make sure you keep your stops in. Each one of these stops are above the swing. So whatever the swing high is or swing low is, that would be your initial stop, and you can trail accordingly. All right, so let's first go over the full zone retracement. This is a recap of the last three videos. And then... I'll go into momentum, and then we'll get into the auto a little bit of what you guys are going to get on the update here coming. So we know the market can only do two things. Uh, all of you guys have been trading the markets and all these different markets. It can go vertical and go sideways. I mean, everybody pretty much knows that. So if we go sideways, we're in a chop market. If it goes vertical, we're in a trend market. So we, we, want, to, we want to find out when the market is going vertical. There's a video that I did called Momentum when all six dots turn red, all six dots turn green. Um, I'm not going to go over that today because I have, a, I have two videos on that under videos. Play that. It's just how to trade momentum and look for the first wave one and wave two retracements. That's a separate video. I'm not going to recap that. But that tells you if you're in a hot market, okay, if you're looking to go vertical. These setups work in conjunction with that setup. So if we're if you see that we're turning six, all three of my zones are six red dots turned together or all six turn green on my previous videos that you played here recently, you know to look for what? Full retracement, FZRs, and momentum. What I would what I like to do, I like to look for the FZR first. The FZR almost always comes before the momentum. No matter what type if you look at all your momentum trades the primary full retracement zone will come first, and then you get momentum that follows. And what I'll do in a second, I'll show you how to look at different time frames also. So you can sort of fit what time frame you want to trade. If you trade large time frames, I'm going to go over large, large time frames tonight also. And then I'll go over short, short time frames for scalpers also. You may be a position trader, you may be a scalper, or you just may be trying to get day trading only. You can fit this algo to your desired settings. And I made the code open so we can do that. And as I update this algo to reflect momentum trades where you can capture those automatically with an out with the automated strategy, uh, you can do that also. And some of you uh, want to trade a lot of times. You can use the momentum setup in a small time frame, which I'll go over, or you can use it um, on large time frames and only position trade. If you like trading, if you like day trading the spiders or diamonds or so on, where you can't scalp as much, All right? So that being said, we have the ATR, okay? So we have the ATR, which is red. That means we're in a downtrend. All right. So if we're in a downtrend, you know, you you want to sell retracements. Now, what I've done, and I show traders this all the time, is what I like to do is I always like to look before we get going here. I like to look at larger time frames to see where we're going. Now, I've done this for the room 
This is a weekly ES. We were up here. This is my target on the ES, the 43.50. Everybody in the room knew that. That was my target on the ES for a possible top um, on the weekly. And my target was down here at 35.50. This is my target on the weekly when we're all the way up at 4,300 and at 4,000. I said this is a possible bottom. And then my ultimate target is going to be 33.50 where the 550 sits. So I like to look at larger time frames. I'm going to show you how you can use the algo with this looking at large time frame to get your mind right. This is the daily. So the daily I sent this out when we formed this bull flag to you guys and I updated everybody. Here's my target. Once we broke out of here to close, I said our target is 43.50. We should come up and test at 200. The analysis was correct. It tested 200. We tanked. So the target would be 20, retest the 20, came down to 50, retest the 50, came back up. But then it formed a bull flag, right? We had a big, uh, the news came out, had a big push down. We formed this bear flag. And this bear flag came out, and uh, the target on the bear flag was right there, was 3550. And that's why we had that big bounce from 3550 to 3900. And I talked about this in the room before this even happened. I said that would be my target, 3550. Sure enough, we came down to it. Play the lowest 35, 70, 68 or 72 or something like that. And then it bounced up and it came right to the 20, retested that, and then we just got hit. I mean, it came right to the 20 and got smacked down again. So right now it's trying to form a double bottom. If we break this low, then I'm looking for 33.50 in the ES, which is not uh, unheard of because once we hit 4,300, we knew the market would be in trouble. We've been in a bear ever since then. Uh, actually, we've been in a bear all the way back, if you look at it, um, since she's all the way back in December of 20, uh, of uh, December of 21. So, but I'm going to show you now. So that's that's a daily I look at. So your members should have these. If you don't have these uh, these levels, um, uh, email me um, at uh, Jason at DayTradingTheFutures.com, and I'll send these over to you. I really highly uh, like you guys putting these on here. Highly, highly uh, suggest you, you put it on the educate traders, put them on there because it, it gets your mind right. It means the market, the push has been down. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We've been in a bear. We're bear on the daily. We're almost fully bearish on the on the weekly, but we're getting close to support on the weekly at 33.50. So if you want to email me here. then I'll be glad to send you those over. The reason I'm saying that is, is that you can set these trades up this way also. What I like to do with these charts, when I see all red ATR, is I like to look at those levels that I look at, right? Hold on one second. Like those, those, those look at, and get an idea where the push is. Because if we just broke through major support and hit a major top, when, this, when these ATRs turn red or turn green, et cetera, the, the push is with you then. You've got a macro uh, point of view, you know, pushing with you as far as the micro point of view also. And it's a really neat thing to do because it helps you out with your overall, uh, overall direction. So the, the, the full retracement, in other words, let's go over that real quick. The, the full retracement zone is this. It says that I need to get inside or at, at or inside of this zone of these two red dots. If I get at or inside of this zone, these two red dots, I'm in a zone trade. That's a full zone retracement because I'm inside of the zone. Consequently, I'm above 80. So this, these, you have to have this. If you do not have these two characteristics, then you don't have an FZR. So you have to be above 80 no matter what. So you got above 80 here, but you're not at the zone. That's not an FZR. Right? You got to be above 80. So we're above 80. Here's my 80. Here's my 20. On my oscillator below, it has to be above 80. Once it gets above 80 and you're in the zone and you are red ATR, you have a possible sell setup, okay? Now, I get a lot of traders that ask me, well, how do you know the uh, what time frame, if you're trading off a smaller time frame, 
you know, are you counter trend trading the market? If you want to put, right, this is my largest one I show in the room. I show an uni, an uni Rinko, a 120-20. I highly, highly educate traders to put an uni 120-20 as a standard chart using this algo because it takes a lot of chop out, it gets your mind right, and it gets a lot of fluff out of the market. A lot of the noise comes out of the market. If you bring this down to a small Rinko, let's say a 155 or 188, and I'll show you, you're going to get some noise. So just remember that the smaller time frames that you use, the more noise you're going to get. The larger time frames you get, the smaller noise. So I'm going to show you larger time frames. They'll come right up to the zone and reject off of it. Come up, reject. Come up, reject. Come up, reject. So be aware of that. All right. You don't necessarily have to trade off of large time frame for your order entry. But to get your mind right, you know this is a sell zone. You know this is a sell zone because you're not trading off a small time frame. You're not trading off of a real tiny time frame and getting a lot of noise. So I highly educate traders to look at larger time frames. If you want to get it and you want to put it in another perspective, if you trade off a lot of different, if you have a lot of monitors or you like using different monitors, use those two same ones that I like to use that I send out on the daily and weekly chart and put it up on a 15 minute chart. Now the larger side goes at 15 minute and a five minute intraday. So if I go, if I do this just to confirm, if I got a five, I put these beside each other, I put a five just to see where I'm at, so for my, for entries. So if I'm here and I'm in a downtrend on the 15 minute, these cross are down, because moving averages to me are worthless, absolutely worthless, but they're great for trend direction on larger time frames. So I use a 15, five and a one minute. And what I'll do is, is I'll see if the five, 15 minutes in downtrend and the five minutes in downtrend, if my one is jiving, if my one is jiving with my, like this, they're all three lined up, I'm looking for an FCR. I'm looking for a momentum setup, okay? So it just, these, I like to use these as just a standard bar, so I make sure if I'm trading off, especially if you trade off small FCRs and momentums, you got to have a bigger picture. So I like to educate traders, even if you don't want to use these uh, 15, uh, 5, and a 1 minute to confirm. What I like to do is I want to make sure that I'm using a larger time frame to see where the, see what the scope of the market is. All right? Because that way, if you get your mind right and you know the scope of the market, you know, you're selling retracements all morning or you're buying retracements all morning because you're putting yourself in a position to buy and sell with overall trend direction. And I think it's very smart if you do that because it allows you to, uh, to always play the side of the trend because if you go against the trend, you know, you tend to get beat up. In other words, if I look at this chart on the 15 minute and I look at this chart where I was, we had that big economic news that came out at, uh, uh, the 8.30, if you bought all day, you deserve to get stopped out because we were in a hard 15 minute downtrend. It never even crossed above the 20 all day. It was below the 20 all day. So it was short FZRs and short all day long short momentum retracements. Don't even think about taking buys. So I like to, that's something I do. I like to look at the daily, I like to look at the weekly just for the the big thing, the big picture, I'm showing traders how to do that when I'm in the room talking on the mic. I want to go over this on the mic too to help traders members set this up because it gives you your mind right because then you're focused on one thing. You're focused on only selling retracements, FCR sells, and you're only selling momentum uh, momos. It gets your mind right. So, you know, and like I said, I like to use the 15, uh, 5, and the 1 minute being the lowest. So, if you come in then and you see at 8 o'clock this morning, and this is some, some heck of a trading on the S&P this morning, we were cranked down right from the get-go. So if you look and I come back to my 15-minute chart, and if you look at all the movement that happened during the day, since 8.30 this morning when economic news came out, the PPI, it told you if you look at all this movement it had on a larger time frame, it told you one thing, you better only sell 
FZRs, and you better only sell momentum retracements, period. Because the larger time frame on the ES, it was just grinding lower all day. Grinding lower. And today was kind of a chop, chop day. But you can see it gets your mind right. And I'm not in the uh, members tomorrow. I'll show you how to set this up. If you have it, I put it on a real small, I have a small monitor on the side. And I only put these three charts on it. And I just, I like to do that because it, it makes, it, it gets your mind right of when you want to turn the automated algorithm on or if you want to do it manual trading with the overall tone of the market. That way, when you go down into a chart like this, your mind's already right, right? Your 15 minute on the S&P is in a hard downtrend, right from the PPI news, right from the open. We, we're, we are one 15 minute bar down at 9, 845 and said, you better start selling this market. You better short this market right from the get go. It crossed down like, let's say 833 or so uh, on the other time frames. It told you, sell this FCR, sell this momentum setup, sell the, the FCR over here also, all right? Does that make sense, guys? Would you give me a why if you understand that? And I don't go over this tomorrow at 815 tomorrow. Just get your mind right. Are you guys on the same page? Look at the macro if you trade these smaller time frames. Are we on the same page, guys? You guys understand that? Are you guys still following me a little bit? Is it If you look at the macro point of view, these FZRs and the momentum retracements, they'll, they'll, they'll pop, right? And that's what we got to make sure we understand how to do because you want to get your mind right, okay? So that being said, let's go forward uh, with the with the full zone retracement. So you have to be above 80, right? Now I get this a lot, and this is try this is going to help you understand how the algorithm, automated algorithm, takes trades. It's not going to take a trade, the automated algorithm, unless you have a right there, unless you have a uh, a speed bar. You have a speed bar. But if you look at this live today, when I was wa watching this live here this morning, watching this live here this morning too, when these form in the larger time frame, this is a 12020. Don't get confused of it's got to be red or it's got to be green on the larger time frames. It just has to show a speed bar that closes. If it does that, and you're into, look at these major bottoms, it calls major bottom, major top, major top. You want to, this is a counter trend trade one right here, but if you want to look at the ones of trend, once this formed and closed, once it's closed, because this closed, this formed before this red bar even formed, and it's a larger time frame, 120, 20, it, it closed. As soon as you get that red reversal bar, that is your possible top in the zone. Right here, you get the speed bar that came up, the red bar closed. Your smaller time frame will confirm because it will print green. It will print green, it will print green speed bars on a 10.6 if you use a name 113.13. Once that speed bar closes at the zone, you're at an FZR. Why? Because I'm above 80, I'm at the zone. I'm above 80, I'm inside the zone. Right? Now, you can use these supply demand lines for confluence, right? That's confluence. There's a price stop right at the uh, ATR. Here is your cyan demand line, right? The ATR, that's a major possible top. But my point is, is that if you use a 12020 as a uni, uni rank of 12020, be aware if you do use that, then you are looking at a possible reversal, whether it be green or red, but it's got to be opposite color pulling bar, and it's got to close. Whereas the smaller time frames, like the 11313, if you're selling, it'll be green. If you're buying, it'll be red. Um, it will fire off. The larger time frames, I got to make an adjustment to get the color change. It just does that way on the larger time frames. But if you see that right at the retracement, that is a possible move down. So that's a full zone retracement. It's got to be at the zone. The ATR dots still got to keep printing. Once these ATR dots stop printing, and I'll show you in a second on a smaller time frame, you are in a trend change. Layoff selling. All right. The second one is momentum. So let's say the market doesn't get to our zone. Right? What happens? Well, a momentum setup can have a speed bar 
or it doesn't even have to have a speed box, right? It can have a speed box or it doesn't because you're using the oscillator below and you're using coming off of an FZR. The best momentum trades come off FZRs. So if I come off an FZR, I'm in the zone, I got a red reversal bar, I'm moving down. If I get a green reversal bar, meaning we got counter trend traders pushing it back up, it lets me know that I got a possible momentum setup. As long as this oscillator down here, and this is how I'm, how I'm programming the algorithm, as long as this oscillator right here does not go above 80%, then you got a possible momentum setup. So when it turns back red, red reversal bar, that is an entry right there because that's a momentum setup. You're letting the market counter trend trade itself back up. The MA's already crossed down. They cross down, so you're going to have a couple characteristics with the momentum setup. It's got to be with MA, and this is how the algorithm works also, the automated algorithm. It's got to cross. It's got to not go above 80, and it's got to have a reversal bar. If all three of those characteristics happen, you have an extreme, I mean, you have a, mo a momentum setup. Now, if it stays below 20, that's called extreme momentum setup. You typically see this. This is a huge sell in the S&P. That was 3608. You see this all the time with this program. And it got down to 96. Guys, these are not small moves on the S&P, right? That's a 16-point potential play on the S&P, just that leg, that wave three leg, and here's a wave five leg, right? So these are not small legs. Now, I'm going to show you how you don't have to trade necessarily off the 120.20 for your entries because guess what? If you use a 120.20 uni, then your stop has to do what? Because once these unis form, right, let's say that once the first uni forms and it goes a full red uni, that second uni is going to do this, right? It's going to go tick, 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 and go all the way up. As long as it's in a downtrend, it will not form a green uni unless it closes above or breaks that high of that uni, right? So you know, as long as it doesn't break the high of the uni, these are all red unis all the way down. So it lets you know, as long as you don't break, so if we get a momentum set up and it closes red uni for an entry, you can sell a retracement with hotkeys, with a hotkey retracement, or you can use a smaller time frame to fire yourself in on a retracement, which I'll show you how to do. Totally up to you. But my, my point is, is that you can use the FZR and momentum setups they happen all day long. It's going to be one of the two because we're either going to go fully into the zone or the market's really hot and you're looking for a possible move down. All right. Now it's easier to see in a smaller time frame, which I'll show you. But so when you do turn, if you're using a 12020 uni like this as the basis for your setups, then you can trade off smaller time frames or use hotkeys to look to fire back into those setups uh, on a retracement. If you do sell right when it turns red, then think about this. If you have a 12020, your stop has to be above 12020. It's got to be it's got to be above 20 ticks. And I add three ticks on top of that with the algorithm, automated algorithm or manual entry. So let's say you just want to trade off of this time frame, your stop is a 12020 uni, your stop should be 23. If you trade off a 113.13, your stop should be 16. If you trade off a 110.10, your stop should be 13. If you trade off a 188, your stop should be 11. So, so et cetera. So you see my point. Smaller time frames, you can get away with smaller stops as far as that goes. Okay? So those are the two primary setups and how they work. Now, I get this all the time before we get into the algo here, and then I get this a lot of time frames. So when we do look at time frames, one second, get the algo all the way here. We do look at time frames. Is that you can you can look at different, um, you can look at different time frames based upon your trading style. So if your trading style is scalping, you want to look at a smaller time frame. But the concept doesn't change, guys. The concept says that the, the, the FCR still stays the same. The momentum still stays the same. So in other words, if I go to a smaller time frame, because 
I, I show the 120-20 and the 113-13 beside each other for a reason. I got a larger time frame and a smaller time frame. So let's say that we go into here. Let's look at the FCR's momentum. Now this is the same exact time frame, our time, right after the PPI news, because you don't want to trade the first five minutes of 8 to 8.35. It's too crazy and volatile. Um, I mean, it's totally up to you guys, obviously, but too volatile. So here's a 113.13. This is after the PPI came out today. So you see we're above 80 down here, right? So we're above 80, but we're not at the zone. So not at zone or Momo, so that's not a trade. So if you stick to rules, you're going to see these setups come up a lot. Not a setup. But as we come up into the zone, we come into an FZR. As long as I don't get opposite color green dots printing, I can sell this top with confidence because the, the ATR is still going down. Right? And that's what happened. We had a red reversal bar. So if you used to trade off a 113.13 and sold immediately, the fill would be the low of this bar. And your stop would be 16 ticks behind this bar. Now, you could, the, the micros, if you can't make money at the micros, you probably can't money, make money at the big contracts trading live. So I always educate traders, trade with the ES micros. It's one tenth of the big contract that you get the hang of things with these setups. Trade the one tenth of the, the NASDAQ or the Russell 2000 or, you know, the Dow, etc. But look at this. Here's these Momos that come up afterwards. The Momo says on a smaller time frame, you're going to get a lot of different Momos. That's why I like these charts beside each other. This tells me that I'm in the zone on a retracement, small retracement, but look at my oscillator. My oscillator doesn't go above 80. That is a momentum short because I turn red, red reversal bar before the oscillator got above 80. It's a short. Here, we got a speed bar. Oscillator does not get above 80. Red reversal bar, short. Speed bar, green speed bar closes. There's an, there's your, your, you're at or inside the zone. That's what's important for um, uh, FCRs, not as important for Momos. You can see it's below 80. And then here's a Momo below 80. You don't, here's the thing about Momos. You don't have to be inside of the zone on the Momo because it's a momentum trade, right? So I'll go over that with the automated algorithm in a second. All right, we come back up. We come back up. This is an FZR. Why? Because I got above 80. There's my FCR at the zone. That is a setup, right? I come down and I get these green bars. Counter trade traders coming in. Momo, I don't have to be inside the zone. It's telling you a possible huge move down. It's below 80 and it moves down. I want to show you what the trend change is. Come up. Once you get a trend change, now this happens a lot on smaller time frames. Once you get a trend change, trend change into a Momo. Look what happens. Now I got green reversal bars. I mean green ATRs. You got to shift. You got to shift your momentum. Now what I do is the 15 minutes in a hard downtrend and the five minutes in a hard downtrend with these with the, with this chart on my other monitor. I'll stay away from the counter move up. Because I don't like counter, I'll wait till she goes back red and go a little over with the overall push, right? Because this it sold, it sold for about nine, it sold for an hour and ten minutes was nothing but sells. We had sales for an hour and ten minutes after PPI news. And then we got the counter trend traders coming in here at 935. But you can see this momentum trade because why? It turned green ATR, red bars start printing. But I don't, as soon as Riddler start, starts printing, I'm looking to buy this if you're a counter trend trader for a momentum trade. If you like momentum trade because the oscillator stays above 20. An extreme buy, it would stay above 80. And then we get to move up, right? And then we come back in and we go into a no FZR. Why? Because I come down, I come down, I get below 20, but am I at the zone? No. 
it's not an FZR then. A full zone retracement is not outside of my zone. So this is a no trade. And you got to be like this on smaller time frames the FCRs because you get these small little retracements. It could be very particular. So there's your FZR. You're below 20. I get the green reversal bar. I'm below 20. That's it. And guess what I come into? And that's what I'm saying. If, you, if you've been trading this algo like it's supposed to be traded, the, mom, the best momos come after a qualified FCR. It's this first. Right out of my zone, and this second. If you go back and look at all the nice big trades, that likes to happen like that. Yeah, I see you, Gerald. I got you, man. All right. So, right there. So that first, that's six, huh? So that is first. And foremost, Gerald, did you say you got to take off at 5.30? Give me a wire and then in the background. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm going to go over the uh, automated algo in a second. So here's the FCR, and then here's number two, okay? Gerald's got to take off at 5.30 here in about 12 minutes. I'm going to go over the algo in one second, all right? So I just got to make sure you guys understand. If you don't understand how to trade this manually, you sure as heck can't understand how to turn this thing when to do automated trading. You got to understand why these setups come up, right? You got to understand that there, there's a reason these come up and it's consistent. It's not like, well, these come up every once in a while. It's daily and they come up all day long on all these time frames. So you got to understand how it works. And that's what I'm trying to do with these videos. So FCR, momentum, there you go. I get this all the time. Traders say, do I have to have a, um, a speed bar with momentum? No. Do I have to have a speed bar with a full zone retracement? Yes. Yes, you got to have it for the full zone retracement because that's an exhaustion. If I don't get this on an FZR, right? If I don't get this, it's not an FZR. If I don't get this, it's not an FZR. If I get momentum with an FZR, I mean with the with a uh, with a um, if I get a momentum with a speed bar, it usually is a big trade, right? But do I need them? No, right? FZRs, yes. So I want to clarify that, all right? So just be consistent in your approach as far as that goes. But that's, so you, you can sort of cater towards what time frame you want to trade off of based upon, I like the 120.20 and the 113.13. That's why I show in the room, okay? Let's go into automated trading then. All right, so let's go. So I like to have these charts beside each other. So let's just take a look at this real quick before I go into this. This stuff is so much to go over. It's hard to get all these in in, in an hour here. But let's go. Uh, let's go. No, what time was that? Uh, 43. So 12020, what you can do is you can use this. So a trader's like, well, I don't want to trade off a 120.20 over here. That means I'm going to have a 23 tick stop at the swing. Well, you don't have to. You can let it come inside the zone and start checking down on your smaller time frames. Use a macro 120.20. Look at your smaller time frame. Look how the FCR called the high up here. Now, instead of 23 tick stop, you're down to 16 immediately because it should never break this swing high. But look at the different, look at this compared to that. Now, if I can bring it down, look at all the momentum setups. That's why they're great beside each other. All right? Hold on. That's why they're really good beside each other. And then I get over here. I break this down. That's why I like having these charts right beside each other. Because then it gets your mind right. Because you know, this is a big inflection point at 847 or 843, and this is a huge inflection point at the zone at 930. So if I'm a trader, you should be trading at eight, around 843 and 930, just have 930, right? Because this is the first retracements inside the big zone on the larger time frame, all right? Then if you break it down to a sub chart, or I call it a smaller time frame, which is the 113.13 uni, right? Then you can see, Here's all your trades based upon 
this large time frame setting up at four retracements. Because if you use just this chart over here, look at your oscillator below. Look how much noise you get on your oscillator below. But if you use this over here with this, the larger time frame, it gets your mind right of what the smaller time frame is going to pull you, pull you in at. Now, if you want to take a step further and you go, okay, it's for you guys that really want to get into this for position trading, only trading one, two, three, four times a whole entire trading day. If you want to do that, because my zones are very, very accurate, and you know, you guys have it. You can see how my zones stop the market. Very, very accurate, high probability trades. Then you go into a larger time frame. So let's say I go 125.25. Or let's say, it's, I'm sorry, this is a 130.30 just to show you. Now you're telling yourself, you know what? I only want to trade one, two, three, maybe two times a morning and try to let the runner run. So what you can do is you can have a, a macro point of view by saying, hey, let me do a larger uni of 130.30. And let me look at these zones when it comes up in my zone. So if I'm trading, here's 830. Look how my zone stopped the PPI news. Stopped it. Red reversal bar right inside the zone. Look for a push inside the zone, inside the zone, inside the zone. These are all major inflection points on the ES today. Is here, 8.30, right? 8.33, 8.43, 9.30, 8.45. And then it has a trend change, another major inflection point, 940, time of day trade. That's my favorite time of day trade. Everybody knows of that, 940 plus or minus five minutes. I love that. So you can see, you can sort of tell on a full retracement off of a larger time frame. Now I'm looking at a 130.30 and I got my mind right, right? So what I'm doing, I'm saying, hey, okay, well, I know that 15 minutes in a hard downturn all day, I want to try to sell these macro swings. Try to get short these macro swings in the resistance, right? And let it turn back down. Sell this macro swing. I don't care about this counter trend trade because I knew my 15 minute was down all day long. It was crossed down all day. So I want to try to sell this then too, right? I want to try to sell that first trade inside the zone, another big macro. I want to do that counter. I want to sell this zone. Let's wait till it turns red. I want to sell these zones, this zone, this zone. And you want to keep selling those zones on the macro point of view and sell the zone into the close. So you can use larger time frames to do that also. Okay? That's what I like to do. I like to look at the larger time frame, get my mind right, see where the ATR pushes. The, the highest uni I like to go, I wouldn't go more than a 135, 35 uni to get your mind right. And you can break it down. I like the 120 and 113, 13. I really like those. That combo. Some of you, if you want to do a higher time frame, maybe a 120, 20, 118, 18, it's up to you. Uh, totally up to you how you guys want to do it. But as far as that goes, okay? Let's go over to the auto trading and let me show you what we got updating, okay? And then we're going to have to have another conference call again next week, Gerald. I'm sorry, man. We have to go to Series 5 because I got to totally go into the algorithm now. I, I got to spend a whole thing. I just got to get you guys do it, knowing how to look at this manually because if you don't understand when and why the setups come up the algorithm is not going to work for you to when to turn it on and turn it off until i get this updated where it only takes trend trades which i'm doing now which i'll show you but my point is you got to know when the fcr is supposed to come up or the momentum if you do that and understand go to macro down to the micro you're going to see a lot of these setups that that do very very well Okay, uh, go again next week. Yeah, Wednesday at 4.30 next week, Gerald. But hold on. Do not shut that off yet. I want to show them something, but hold on one sec. All right, what I've added is what I've added. Okay, let me show you. I've added this. This is, this is today. I've added the momentum indicator. You, are, you have the retracement indicator that sells retracements. We're going to go over next week, start to finish. You guys have now, what is it, four videos we've done, Gerald? Yeah. Four videos on how to sell the FCR, excuse me, the FCR and the momentum. That's that's enough. Now let's get into when to turn this auto on and turn it off. I'm gonna have to have a whole hour to do this because it's really in depth. But let me show you a preview of what we're gonna do next week, and let me show you what I got done so far on the adding the momentum. Now I've added a momentum indicator now. 
So this is a momentum indicator. I don't have the retracement indicator on here. This is momentum because I want to show you what I added. So momentum indicator is this. Momentum indicator says, i got to hurry up because you're almost take off here. Let's see. Momentum indicator says this. I want to sell this right here, right? That was the top momentum sell today after the news came out. This will catch it. This caught it right here, okay? This caught the momentum. That caught the momentum. There's a momentum sell. It automatically caught it. I'm going to show you how, how it did it. So, so if you only want to trade momentum setups after FCR comes up, you can turn this on, toggle it on, and it caught that. They caught all this momentum trade right here. Caught this whole swing right there. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I've done, uh, and then it caught another momentum. Here, let's just get this down. These are momentum cells. These are all momentum trades. So if you turn it on at 8:30, it caught all the way to 9:30. It caught three momentum cells here, here here. What I've done on this strategy is this. And guys, we're going to go over this stuff. To, to, it's, it's not going to call it J-Leg strategy, so it's going to be something else. So don't, you guys be like, what's J-Legs? Now, I did legs because I like runners and I call it J-Legs, but um, anyway, let's get into this uh, right here. So what I did is I added the Momo. Where are you at? Momo. It's a toggle switch. And the Momo, when it's toggling on, it's only going to show momentum trades. Only momentum trades, and it's going to automatically pull you in on the momentum trades. If it's toggled off, it's automatically going to show you zone trades. So if I turn this back on now, and I took the algo back on, it doesn't show any momentum. It's only going to show, show I'm sorry, zone. So that's what you have right now. You strictly have zone trades. Just so you see this, watch. There's your zone trade right here, right? That's what I caught today. That's a zone. That's a zone cell. That's my zone cell. Now watch. If I go back to momentum, the momentum happened after the zone. If I toggle, if I just click zone, momentum, enable it, it's on momentum. Now, I have traders saying, well, can I, if I, if you double click them both, why don't you just take both? Because I don't want to have that to happen. I want you to just put the strategy on twice so you can see what the momentum is doing and then what the retracement is doing. Keep it separated. Some traders will probably just like momentum because guess what? The targets are fast. I mean, you, you guys all seen them. Don't, you have to take my word for it. Momentum trades are fast, right? The beauty of trading it automatically is the fills are good. You don't you get slippage, but not like manual slippage. I'm trying to sell at the market or buy at the market. So that's the advantage. So you can see on the automated version right there, it caught the swing, but the momentum caught that. Okay.